And welcome back. They played baseball at Harmadon Park tonight. Two teams having very good seasons despite our horrendous spring weather. It was Lincoln against Harrisburg, and this is Sam Siegel, and he lashes one to left field. That's going to score two of his teammates, and the Patriots on that base hit go up 4-1. to one. Siegel shows he can also play some defense. A one-hopper snags it, tags it, and throws the first for a double play. Nice. But on the other side, Harrisburg's Peyton Metzger says, I can uh, impress two with my gold glove, 4-6-3. He had a couple of those, and uh, it's going to be Zeb Wade then, or Zeb Weedy, with the steal of third, the throw into left, and that gives Harrisburg the lead 5-4. to four. However, Nick Kemper would step to the plate and rips one to center field. It, it kind of floats a bit, and that's going to score Tata Noe all the way around from first. Watch the uh, big smile on his face. And he would later get the walk-off game-winning hit in the eighth inning. Your final score, 6-5 to five in favor of Lincoln today. The, the Jackrabbits just didn't get their bats going at Minnesota tonight. They lose 5 to nothing. Seven Jackrabbit pitchers combining on a seven-hitter. And they gave up no runs after the first two innings, but had only four hits in the loss. So Gorman won that game, uh, won that match 9-0. It was the Dakota Cup. We had highlights for you, but they moved it to 1 o'clock and didn't tell us. We showed up at 6 o'clock at McKenna Park and there was no tennis match. I'm not bitter. Boys track and field, the SESD. The boys won by winner, 133. Chamberlain in second place. MVP wins the girls. Chamberlain again in second place. And James Valley Christian wins the 281 conference. The Twins had a chance to get to 10 games over the 500 mark tonight. They were playing in Toronto and Mitch Garver with a long home run. He went three for three tonight. Mitch has seven home runs this year. Uh, they're just getting contributions from everybody so far this year. Uh, and you know they're going to get great contributions from this guy. He could be a Cy Young pitcher this year, Jose Barrios. Uh, seven innings, five strikeouts, no runs, and uh, it came down to the ninth inning. They brought the bullpen in, and it got a little shaky, but hey, when you get a ground ball to first base, that's a nice way to end the game. Twins win at 3-0. They're 22-12 and 12 in first place. The Stampede have the home ice advantage for the Clark Cup Finals. So that starts on Friday. The Herd have really been good at home, but they've also managed to win a bunch of very close games that were either won in overtime like this or the final minute actually like this during the postseason. In fact, they've lost only once during the playoffs. We had a great crowd the other night. It was a loud crowd. Uh, it does gather steam here as we go along. Um, I just like the fact we're starting at home. I like the fact we have the fifth game at home. You know, if we would have played Muskegon, we would not have had home ice advantage. So for us, that's huge. I mean, we're ecstatic. Um, this weekend's going to be something else. Uh, we've been looking forward to this moment this whole year. Uh, these fans are insane. Uh, walk, coming onto the ice last weekend against Tri-City, uh, I don't know what that was, six, 7,000 was here, was insane. And just to play in front of that, it's such an advantage. So if we had something like that, even more, that'd be just electric. Of course, home ice in the playoffs is always a good thing to have, regardless of uh, what, what we've seen in the Stanley Cup playoffs especially when a team plays with such a high level of confidence like the Herd do on their home ice. That fifth and final game would be a week from Tuesday if necessary. Again, here's a look at that schedule. Uh, Friday night and then Sunday at 5 o'clock on Mother's Day. Two games in Chicago and potentially one more game back here. Big honors today for South Dakota State women's basketball coach Aaron Johnston. He's been selected to be one of the four court coaches for the Team USA Under-19 Team Trials. Now those games are going to be used to select a national team. He'll be joined by coaches from Gonzaga, Old Dominion, and Pepperdine. That, uh, those games take place at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. AJ has a great career record of 469 and 156 in 19 seasons at 75%. And the Jacks made the Sweet 16 this past March. The Augustana softball team has been just crushing the ball all season. They are third in the nation with a 357 batting average. But when you head to a regional tournament like the Vikings are Thursday in Winona, it's generally the pitching that makes the difference. 
And Greta Melstad feels she's definitely got the staff that can go far into the postseason. And it's deep, too. Our pitchers this year have been fantastic. I mean, we have an, under a 2.0 ERA for our entire staff, uh, which is which is phenomenal. So, and it doesn't matter who I go to in the circle; they have all done very well, and they do a really good job of complementing each other, and they do a really good job of supporting each other. You don't win 51 games without having good pitching, and we've seen it year after year in the region tournament. The team with a hot pitcher usually advances. Augie plays on Thursday against Missouri Western. Winona State uh, plays against St. Cloud State. Those games in Winona. And the uh, Summit League softball tournament actually starts tomorrow in Fargo. State takes on North Dakota. And then Thursday is the number two seed, USD against Fort Wayne or Western Illinois. And that's sports. We'll all be right back.